Loops and Home Assistant are a powerful tool to have in your repertoire. By the end of the video, we'll be able to identify all sensors that need a new battery, for example, under a certain threshold like 20%. You can also use loops to find out which lights are on at a certain time in your home. But now, let's roll the intro. Welcome back to the channel. This is Geo from Spiral Makers, and this video is in a series of coding tutorial videos for Home Assistant, which we'll link at the end of this video, the whole playlist. Now it's time to roll up our sleeves and get into it. Click Developer Tools and go into Template. You'll see all of this over here. You can just simply remove it. Now, where to actually start with this loop? What we're going to be creating is a for loop. The for loop will scan through a list and will give us a certain output. If you right click and open this documentation that you see right here and scroll down to states, we'll have some information from Home Assistant and this is where we're gonna be starting today. Iterating is a synonymous of going through a loop. That's what it means. So when we're iterating a state, we're basically looking at the state of entities. So state of entities could be on or off or a specific value. In our example, we're looking for battery levels, so 100% to 0%. We can iterate through a specific domain, so sensors and lights, for example, are two different domains in Home Assistant, and the results will be sorted alphabetically. Let's start writing this loop. So we can open the curly brackets and have a percentage over here, and we're gonna go percentage, close curly brackets. So this is gonna be our start of the loop. Then we're going to have what we'll be printing, and whatever we're going to be printing, we'll have the double curly brackets without the percentage in front. And the third row that we're going to be writing will have the percentage, and this will be ending the loop. And we're going to align it like this. So this is going to be our starting point. Let's start filling this all in. The start of the loop, we're going to be using a keyword called for, and then we're going to say for, and here in programming you can say for x or for state. So this is just a name of a variable. It could be anything you want. I'm going to explain actually why I'm using state. Uh, there's a reason. In is a keyword, and you can see it in blue. So everything that's a keyword is compulsory. So for the state in, and here we use a plural, which is states, and then dot meaning something within the states. So in states we have, we're looking at the sensors in this example. And line three, we're gonna change the end the loop and we're gonna replace it with N4. And you can see that came out as blue, so you know we've got that right syntax. And the state, if we just type in state, uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, gibberish coming out of that. So we just want uh, something specific. So we just want the entity ID of the state. And you can see we have a huge list of entity IDs, which give us some value or perhaps not. What we can also do is we could combine this and we can have write some text. So free text. So we, any text that we add, it will just add it at the end. So a lot of the times you can add, for example, a comma, and this could be useful if you're later on joining them together. What we'll be good doing now is, is add an equal, and I'm looking for the actual value of the states. So if we open again these brackets and we're going to be calling, we're going to be using state dot state. So we want the state and you can see the state is over here, right? So for bedroom heating, we have zero bedroom humidity. So this is the actual state of the entity ID. Now you might get confused because you see state state twice. So this, if this was X, you can see state is undefined. And if I change this to X, it will be exactly the same. So the reason why we do use state is normally because it's the singular of this uh, plural states. So that's sort of a convention. So let me put it back. So that might confuse you when you actually look into this yourself. If you wanna actually just copy and paste this, you can actually find it in the documentation over here. But by writing it yourself, you practice and you get a hang of how it works. Cool, so the next thing we're going to be doing is we'll be filtering the results set based on the device class battery. So now we have all of our sensors. We only want the sensors that have a battery class in them. So how do we do that? 
So let's go to states. Of course, we've got a couple of examples here. You can see you have two sensors, a one amp is 100 percent fridge door sensors 80 percent fridge door battery 70. So these are what we have, and you can spot them by looking at the device class battery. So this is going to be quite important. And you can see the unit of measurement is a percentage, so we know it's 100% is our maximum in our case. If we need this information, device class battery, we're going to copy that and, and keep that as an information. Actually, you just put it over here. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually change the original code to add and filter the uh, states so we only return things that have batteries. So we're using that function, select attribute that I showed you previously. I am picking the attributes and I'm using the device class. So we're looking at all of the attributes of a certain entity and of those attributes, we're looking for the device class. As you can remember, the device class can be power, connectivity, window, depending on whatever it is. So the device class that we're using is battery, which you can see specified over here with battery and the double equal it means the comparing, right? So we are looking at that equal and we can see battery. And this pipe is, is a filter. Now we can see this list, right? And this is getting a little bit more useful compared to just having a, a, a whole list. But how do we take this to the next level? We need to find out the sensors that have only maybe 20% or under battery. So we need to use an if statement and that if statement needs to be within the loop. The if statement needs to check a few things. First of all, it needs to check if the battery has a, a valid uh, result. So it's either zero or 100. We want to exclude anything that's like unknown because that's just going to clutter and create a mess. And then we're going to look at anything that's under a certain threshold. All the code that I'm typing, you're going to find it in a blog post that will be coming soon. So remember to subscribe to the channel and like and share this video if you're getting value out of it. So what did we add differently to make this work? Well, first of all, what we're doing is we're looking at all sensors under 20%. So if I just change this number to 100, you're going to see all of my batteries and all of the level and all the sensors, right? So let's put it back to 20 and let's go through exactly what we are doing so you can understand. The F statement that I mentioned over here is looking at a few things. First of all, have we got a value, valid value? So we're looking at the zero and we're saying the zero is less than or equals to the state dot state. So we're checking basically that if it does have a value that's less than the state dot state and we're looking for this integer minus one, then we're going to basically take all of this and say that's a valid result. If that valid result, then we're looking for uh, the threshold. So this is what we said. It could be 5%, but I don't have, I only have one sensor. It could be 10%, it could be 20%, it could be anything you want to set yourself. So bear that in mind. And the uh, pipe int is a data type. So it's, it we're basically telling Home Assistant that we want integers. This piece of code over here looks a little bit long and convoluted, but we're gonna get to what that actually does. What it does, it's creating an array. What is an array? Let me show you quite simply. If I remove this, let me remove check the battery for, and you can see this, right? So you can start seeing this in a little bit more of a programmatic format. You can see these uh, square brackets and you can see we have a separation. So we have two uh, basically values in a list to keep this simple. So we've created the list. How did we create the list? Well, first thing is to declare the list. So we created a list and we use that with the keyword set. You give your list a name, I've called it output, you can call it results, list, whatever you want. And here I'm using a namespace and I'm doing sensors and I'm having here a, a list, basically I'm declaring an empty list, okay? And this piece of code of here is then referenced down below at line number four. So line number four, what we're saying is, is that we are setting the output dot sensors to be equal to the output dot sensors plus the state name. So we are constantly adding to this list. And then we're also adding the percentage value. So you can see over here where we have the brackets and we have the value, which would be state dot state. You can see state dot state is here. So if I just do state 
you can see this is a, a mess. So state.state .state gives me the exact value. And then we have tildes to do some separation. And then we have a percentage and we always have these around quotes because this is a string, right? So you could remove this. So you'll probably remove this like this and you can see that uh, the percentage is gone. So let's put the percentage back so it looks a lot nicer. Cool, so that explains how this actually works, this output. So it outputs an array, but if we're using these in sensors or we're using it in a card or we're using it with our you know, text-to-speech, we want this to actually flatten so we want to join all the values together and we want to join them and separate them with a comma. You could separate them with and, you could separate them with whatever you, character you want. To actually do that, I'm using another filter that you just type in uh, with the pipe and then you just specify join. Let's add this in like this. Um, cool, so we've added open bracket and then we've added a comma and you can see right here, we have hallway sensor battery and then we have master bedroom switch battery. And we basically, so this is the name of the entity, which comes from state.name. And so, and this one over here is the value, which comes from state.state .state, and everything else is just open brackets, spaces, and things like that for formatting. So with join, you could change this to and. If I change this to and, you can see it over here. Some, bear in mind of the spacing, you can see this is all now squashed together. So you can put a space at the end and you can space it out and you can be like that. But comma is normally better off because you might have multiple values. And let me actually show you. So if I put this to 30%, we start having three uh, values. So comma makes much more sense. So I've got a little bit of homework for you guys. I would like you to actually go out and try and build a piece of templating code yourself. What I want you to do is find out and list all of the lights that are currently on in your home assistant. I want the output to be similar to this with the name of the entity and the state. If you want to, you can put a color or brightness in the state. Obviously, they will be all on. So make it as complex as you want. Whoever actually gets the best piece of code in the comment section down below. And if you see one that you really like, you can upvote it then they will feature in next week's video. In the meantime, if you want to learn a bit more about if statements in Home Assistant and in templating, I'm going to leave you with this video over here. This was Geo from Spider Makers. I hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one. Ciao.